And, oh, there we are. Hi, everybody. It's Kyle. And it's Christina. And this is the CP Chronicles. Sorry we're late. We've been having some issues getting our guest on, but we're thankful that he's here with us now. So thank you for joining us, Jeff. That's good. Good to be part of the three amigos. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us. And, you know, he's been a very loyal viewer. So we're finally excited to have you on today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourselves to our listeners and viewers? Well, good morning from Australia here, and good afternoon to my American viewers, wherever you might be. It's great to be here. Yeah, I'm Jeffrey Pankhurst. I originate from New Zealand, or should I say that's where I was born. I've lived in Australia since 1965, and uh, maybe uh, I've had CP since birth, but like the rest of us, it's just a challenge that we deal with. And I'm a pretty happy man, especially to be on CP Chronicles. <laughs> well, thank you. What kind of CP do you actually live with? Uh, I think it's I think it's what they probably still call well, spastic cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Um, yeah. Are you quiet or die? That's Am I quad or die? Uh, yeah, it affects all four limbs, I think. Yeah. Uh, okay, my lower wow. limbs more than my upper limbs. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that's CP, it affects a lot and it's a challenge. And I know you're actually in a new therapy that you just started recently. Uh, yeah. Tell us about that. Yeah, I've shared, yeah, I've shared on Facebook about um, starting a hydrotherapy program. Uh, pr prior to that, yeah, I've been, I have been to a, what do you call it, hydrotherapy pool before, but the thing that makes this um, new chapter, um, I think, more effective in this case is that the program is supervised by what I think you in America call physical therapists. Wow. And, uh, so there's two, there's two physical therapists in the pool. There's probably, I don't know, maybe six to eight, let's call them patients in the pool. And uh, each therapist, you know, has their own people to deal with. So, yeah. And of course, if needed, each therapist can, you know, they help each other. Yeah. That would be kind of fun to do more of a group style as opposed to the one on one that I've been used to getting. Right. Yeah. That my experience with um, a type of hydrotherapy was one on one as well. One one patient to one physical therapist. But that's also because we're from a small community. And so they only have so many physical therapists that can make a trip out to the pool on you know certain afternoons and it's a very very yeah. gradual thing but yeah what's it like to no, work I, I, like being in, I like being in the group it's sort of i think it gives yeah. you a bit of confidence I, and yeah mm -hmm. that's what i was going to ask you like does it give you like a boost to see other people working and you know just the camaraderie of like we're all here working to you know on ourselves yeah it is good you know like End of last week, one of the guys says, oh, I'll see you next week, Jeff. You know, and it's really good to have that sort of, yeah, I think everybody does take an interest in each individual, you know? Yeah. Oh, that's, uh, that's really cool. I have something similar now, now that I've graduated actual pool therapy. They still allow those of us that are in other types of therapy to come in during that same hour time slot. So there'll be four or five of us that are just there doing our own, you know, exercises that were assigned to us. And then the physical therapist will be off with their own patients. But it's just nice to know that a physical therapist is there if I would need something or like my physical therapist sees everything. So if I'm doing something wrong, she's going to say, Hey, <laughs> stop. <laughs> you know? Hell yeah. Like she's going to tell me stop right there before you hurt yourself. So that's, it's been, it's been really nice. 
Would you say that this is a more positive experience than other types of physiotherapy that you've had or? Uh, well, I see it as more positive in, in that I've really been uh, inspired to think, yeah, this is going to do a real lot of good because, because the exercises are sort of targeted to my own body, if you know what right. I mean. And the, and the therapists, um, yeah, I feel that they're very, uh, very cognizant of what my, my specific needs are, like they are with all the others. And yeah, I, yeah, I think it's going to bring good results. I, I have had, I still do have uh, physical therapy from another therapist, but that's sort of, it's not, it's not water therapy, you know, it's stretching all those tight muscles that we have, you know, the thighs right. and the, mm -hmm. you know, the, the hip muscles and all that stuff, you know. <laughs> Yeah, we, we know all about that. But I have to commend you, too, just on your positivity towards the whole thing. I mean, some people, when they're starting a new therapy, they're like, oh, gee, I don't know about this. And right from the beginning, you were like, I'm excited to get this started. And I just think that that positive mindset is something that's very, very important for people like us who, you know, go through various types of therapies. If you're positive, I think it really... Lends, it helps with the results. Yeah, it lends to a better result, better outcome because you're positive going into it. So kudos to you. Yeah, thanks, Christina. Uh, uh, yeah, I certainly agree with that comment. Because <laughs> if, if you go in with the mindset of this is going to be a waste of time, then it is going to be a waste of time. Right. And you're not yeah. going to you're not going to see any yeah. improvement. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just one of those things like you got to put in the work and a lot of people don't want to put in the work, which is fine. But then don't expect a lot of change if you're not going to do that. If you, if you, if you don't put in the work, you won't get the. You know, yeah. You don't result the yeah, and now that you've, you know, got to a place of such, you know, a good place with physical therapy, what ha what has it been like growing up with CP in Australia, you know, for so long? Because, you know, I know you aren't covered by, like, the ADA as we are necessarily. Um, yeah, we so have what's a, it like over a, there? We, we, have a, we have a scheme in Australia. It's a national scheme called the National Disability insurance scheme which was i think was the, the act to establish it was i think about 10 years ago um yeah and so um to actually be on it to actually get on it currently you have to be under the age of 65 if you if you're 65 years or older you can't get on it that's something that a lot of people are trying to change because it's a bit it's a bit discriminatory, you know. Yeah. But um, oh, it look, it's certainly. Can I say I've been one of the lucky ones? It, not all the stories you hear are, are sort of good. Not everybody sort of has been able to get what they want, and some people have to go to a tribunal to sort of fight to get what they want, you know. But me, uh, it's given me a new wheel, fantastic power wheelchair, which. You might have seen. I call it the bluebird because it's just, yep. it's blue and I like blue. Uh, yeah, it's a great wheelchair, and um, that's and I also get um, three and a uh, seven uh, and a, a total of seven hours each week um, in home support. So twice a week, um, twice a tw twice a week, Jan comes in for three and a half hours and. You know, cooks and cleans and chats. That's really good. And, and that's all supported by the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Well, that's awesome that they have that there. What's it like on the days that um, your caretaker isn't there? Like, what's what's a day look like for you? <laughs> um, every, every day is different, Kyle. Um <laughs> my support worker comes on Mondays and Fridays and Tuesday currently is when I go to um, hydrotherapy 
And then Wednesday, there's another very small group. That, it's a local group, really, um, which is called the um, Disabled People's Company. And, uh, yeah, it's very small because some of the members have died over the years, to be honest, so it's small now. But well, what we do there is we we just sit and have a chat and have a morning tea, you know, have a cuppa. That sort of happens on a Tuesday morning. And on, on that sounds fun. That's something we're yeah. starting at work with some of our consumers who I help is like a coffee club where they just like go and talk and like hang out for a little while. So that sounds fun. I think it's just nice to be with people who share some of the same difficulties, you know, because ultimately if you don't have some of those same difficulties, you don't have the same level of understanding, you know, as those that share some common struggles. Exactly. I've been really inspired by your positivity, Christina, with the, you know, with your tumbles. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm trying. I just, I, I just, it's great, how, I mean, it's great how you, it's great how you, sort of laugh them off. <laughs> well, you know, I, it could be a little embarrassing. <laughs> well, part of me thinks that you have to laugh them off and especially when they happen in front of teenagers. I mean, I exactly. fell down I fell down the other day and I landed there and I sort of sighed for a second and I looked at the students and I said, "Well, that was interesting." And then it was like exactly. and then it was like it broke the tension and everybody laughed for a little bit and then it was like then it was like this real concern of like are you sure you're okay with miss mccormick do i need to go get the nurse for you i said oh please don't go get the nurse let's not make this like <laughs> more than yeah. it is. like it's also nice that they care and part of that following is, no, it, is. it is isn't it yeah it's just hey, it's, have we got in total have we got about what 30 minutes now we probably wasted half an hour i mean that half an hour getting on there. I have a short piece of writing that I did some years ago that I'd really like to share on the show before we end. Of, of course. I know not that. Yeah, that was one of the things that we wanted to ask about was what you've been writing and doing. So go for it. Would you, would you like to hear it now? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, it's, it's cool. Just a man with CP with a question mark, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it really epitomizes my approach to life, I think. And uh, I reckon you'll get it. <laughs> uh, it says, Do you ever have those days when your mind drifts effort effortlessly to the time when you were a child? Those images play in your mind. You're a star on a movie set. The camera is rolling. Sometimes you wonder how I ended up with this and no time to learn your lines. Did the director get it wrong? The, the lines don't seem to fit. You're, you need more time to rehearse your part and refine your skills. Then you realize you've been thrown in at the deep end. This is not a rehearsal. This is the real deal. The lines were written for you. You've passed the screen test. It's an awesome privilege to be on the set. When you were first handed your lines, the innocence of childhood played its part. You were blinded to the complexities of the role you were set to play. You were a child after all. It's a good life in Studio One. This is where the action is. Then it dawns on you that there's another world out there. The door to Studio Two has been left open. The props are different. Where are the crutches, the wheelchairs, the calipers? Even the speech is different. Suddenly you have an overwhelming urge to be part of what's going on in Studio Two. The set seems better there, the lines easier to learn, and the props, where are the props? Does this describe how you sometimes feel about your life? You, you're in Studio One, you have drawn the short straw, the, ro 
the role you've been given is in a B-grade movie. Why were you overlooked for a role on the set in Studio in Studio 2? Your lines would be easier if you were there and the story make sense. Or so you think. Just hand me the script now. Actually, in reality, the two worlds intersect. The characters in each production are part of the same story, but the role of each one is unique and critical to the development of the, of the story. Play your part well. The director has chosen you, especially for your role. The camera is rolling. Wow. I definitely find that relatable. I mean, I feel like there's always, you know, changes going on in life and other things that we, you know, think that we want or that we need. But ultimately, I think with CP, sometimes some of that takes a backseat and we end up figuring out what it is we need, even if that's different than what we originally thought was going to happen. Yeah, yep. So I wrote that um, in 2013, <laughs> but it still oh, seems wow. to summarize my approach to life. No, most definitely. I mean, I think we have to work with the, the talents that we're given, and that doesn't mean that we can't work for something else. But like you said, each of us has an important part and an important uh, role to play. And... Um, you know, it's it's important to realize our value as well. Yeah. How, how long have you been writing? Oh, look. I could say I've been writing since I was a, a primary school student, but not not consistently. But as I think I've told you previously, I am working on my memoir or life story or whatever you wish to call it. There's about 32 pages I've done so far, about 8,000 words. Wow. Which incorporates poetry and a bit of this and that. I, I'm still, I haven't really totally uh, landed on a on a title for it, but one title I did think up was A Stone in My Shoe, which kind of indicates, you know, you've got an issue to deal with. Yeah. But, um, so maybe I could call it Just a Man with CP and then subtitle Living with a Stone in My Shoe. I don't know. I don't know. Hey, that has a good ring to it. If I, you ask me. I get the total stone in your shoe analogy because when you do have a rock in your shoe, it's kind of annoying. You want to get rid of it sometimes, don't you? Right. You want to get rid of it sometimes, don't you? But you can't always stop and throw it to the side depending on uh, what you got going on. I wanted to highlight some viewers here. Um, we have Harry Ballas that's here. He says, good morning, Jeff. I thought you'd want to see that. I didn't know oh. that was a friend that you Yeah, had. that's from a friend, actually. That's from a very good friend of mine who I was at college with many, uh, well, decades ago. <laughs> About 1975 oh. or six, yeah. I, I well, did let quite a few of my I did let quite a few of my friends know that I was <laughs> appearing on this show. Yeah, I, well, um, we appreciate it too because you know Kyle and I are still shocked that you you know listen to us from all the way over in Australia. So yeah, we never really anticipated that this show would reach so far. So uh, well, I never in the, in my wildest dreams. <laughs> Imagine being here, but I really appreciate it. Hey, there's something else you, you've I've sort of touched briefly on my writing. There's another area that I, I did do art classes for about 10 years. And, oh, I've seen some of your paintings, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. during the lockdown. I, I, you were I, painting a lot, I know. I, I haven't really, I didn't really, I didn't really do much during lockdown. I was pretty, <laughs> pretty down in the dumps kind of thing. But what I wanted to tell you was, um, yeah, I still keep in touch with my fabulous art teacher who's currently not teaching art. And I think she might even be listening in today. And um, anyway, one, I learned a lot from doing art. 
I reckon everybody who's, who has a disability should do art. One thing, it really sticks in my mind. She says, she taught us um, about digging in the darks. You know, the dark colours in a painting really bring out its its beauty and the, you know, and the different highlights. And also the other thing I, I'm very conscious of is one thing we learnt was every colour on the palette influences the other. So, you know, one colour on its own is just a single colour. When they get together, it composes the whole picture. And that's very much like life, you know, <laughs> the friends we have. Yeah, I've definitely grown into much more of a bigger picture type of person. Growing up, it was always like just what's in front of me, you know, kind of more like tunnel vision. And then as I've gotten older and had to go back to therapy, I was like, I need to be thinking long term and like how everything plays together. Bigger picture, how the people, you know, work together in your life and how your actions influence other things as well. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. True. So, no, those those ten years. I should have art done life. art growing up, as a way of expression. Hey, you can still do it, Kyle. You can still do it. Yeah. I mean, I still can. I yeah. Pretty, I was pretty ancient when I started it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should because I, I'm sure it just helped you work through even, you know, how you're feeling that day. You might not be able to say it, but you could paint it or, you know, write it or how, what it. Sometimes it's easier to do that than to say the words. Exactly, exactly. So, so yeah. Um, yeah. So in recent months, in recent months, I have become more positive, and uh, so I, I, I do want to get back to the painting and and keep up the writing. <laughs> yeah. Well. We're, we're excited for you about the writing. When you said you had 32 pages, I thought, oh, my goodness, that's the length of my master's thesis. I, but I don't know if I could write 32 pages all about me. I'd probably ramble on and repeat myself a lot. So good for you. Uh, uh, some of them are, you know, it's a work in progress. But, yeah, uh, I'm inspired to keep going anyway. That's awesome. Um, I did want to ask you about growing up with a disability, if you wouldn't mind, um, you know, just yeah, sure. being that you're from a different, you know, area of the world, like over there growing up was, did, were disabilities just accepted? Were, did, were people afraid of it? Did they, well, how did they react? Did I, did I mention that, um, yeah, I was born in New Zealand actually. So, yeah. um, yeah, so as a kid, as a kid, I spent many, uh, a lot of time away from home, actually, at a special treatment centre for kids with cerebral palsy. Yeah, quite a few miles away from where I lived. And that was a bit tough going. I mean, I think it brought good results. But being, like, I've seen pictures of myself. I was born in 1954. So, and then I've seen pictures of myself in 1957, which would have been only three at that unit. And although, look, I can't really even remember uh, the length of time we, intervals of time I spent there, whether it was six months or three months. Like, but it was always being a bit hard being away from home. But um, at that particular place, which I attended until I was about, well, nine really when my father died um there was a school room there and uh therapists were there doctors were there you know all the stuff was on site you know wow one thing one thing i told a friend once do you um well in this part of the world there's a you know well in new zealand they used to call it guy fox night or cracker night you know and, and you'd like crackers, probably maybe like you do on Independence Day. I don't know, July 4th. But anyway. Oh, firecrackers, I yes. Hate, I used to hate it when the firecrackers were lit because I'd jump a mile, you know? Oh, and we do too. Even we, still now. <laughs> you know the startle reflex? Yep. Oh, yeah. 
I never learned about it. I didn't know that the startle reflex had a name until I, until I did sort of internet research and became connected with CP groups. Yeah. And I told a friend. I, I have a story. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. And he said, and he said, um, gee, that would make a good, a great movie. <laughs> that scene in a movie with the crackers going off and everybody jumping, jumping sky high, you know. I have a story about the startle reflex. It was we were I was watching a movie just like last week and a loud noise went off. My leg jerked real like real big. Usually it's small, like I can control it, but my leg jerked really big and I knocked over a TV tray that had soda on it. And it, oh, no. the soda fell right into my lap and I had to change clothes because it was everywhere. It was just like, I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> like, I didn't mean to do that. Doesn't <laughs> normally, you know, it's not normally so big, but. Oh, Kyle, your dad has a yeah. comment. He says, Kyle is so jumpy that it's funny. <laughs> I can't help it. I'm glad yeah. my dad's watching because I told him you were coming on, Jeff, from Australia. And he's like, ooh, I got to watch that one. So I wasn't sure if he was watching. Yep, okay. he's here. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I sort of cut short a bit of it growing up with CP and like in another part of the world. Um, once I came, once I came to Australia, like, yeah, um, physio or physical therapy continued here. My, my mother actually worked at a hospital, which was owned by, well, the Seventh Day Adventist Church actually, which is I'm affiliated with. And, and so I had, I had physiotherapy or physical therapy there for every Sunday every Sunday for years and years. And I reckon all that physical therapy that I've had is sort of what's kept me, definitely kept me mobile and still walking, still walking at 68, Kyle. I'm hoping, Jeff, I am hoping. That's exactly what we want for ourselves though. I mean, it doesn't mean that you've got to do it everywhere and you can definitely monitor, you know, for fatigue or whatever else, but that's, you know, that's what physical therapists want, though. Like, the people that have helped us along, like, they they want us to be mobile, and we want to be mobile to be able to do the things that we want to yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I kind of echo the sentiment of, like, the weekly therapy sessions sometimes felt like a lot, but it's given me a lot of strength and a lot of skills that I wouldn't have had if someone hadn't taken the time with me to work on those things once a week for the first yeah probably 18 yeah. years of my life. Exactly. Yeah, I when I started off at three days a week. Yeah. And then went down to two and then eventually down to one. So it was, Yeah. Um it's, one of the biggest challenges I dealt with during those years was when I changed from a walking frame to actually walking with crutches. Um but of course it was worth persevering. It definitely was worth persevering. So yeah, that's I can imagine that would be a really, really big transition. I mean, I've I've been struggling going from you know, from two canes back to one and I just I can't imagine I mean, I know I went from a I went from a well, I, we call it a walker, but I assume that'd be something close to a standing frame. Uh I went from yeah. a walker to canes, but I was probably five or six at the time, so I'm sure I was tired and store or whatever but i'm was too young at the time to really remember what that transition you know was really yeah like. i was gonna say the same thing like i don't i know it was hard but i really can't think back to like you know i can't remember that time of the transition yeah from go because i was yeah, in a yeah. wheelchair to well crawling wheelchair then um walker and then arm crutches so yeah then a, but isn't yeah. it funny though that you remember you don't remember the tough stuff all the time? Like even though that was yeah. so hard, like yeah. I don't remember that part. Like in the moments it was, you know, oh I'm sure like I can't do this, I don't want to do this. And then now trying to think back on it, I just remember like I did it. Yeah, you did it, man. And you did it when you got your license. <laughs> I did. That is still like your biggest flex. I know. I'm still like, I still talk about it to people. 
I'm sorry. I'm sounding like my, one of the one of the teenagers that I teach, but that is your biggest like flex, <laughs> the biggest accomplishment. Like, look at me, like because you were so darn hard for so long to make that happen. So, thanks. Yeah, Thank yeah. I still, oh, I, did, I, I, did I, I, you know, I still think about it, and I'm like, I, I did it, man. Like, I freaking did it, you know. So. Yeah, pinch me and I'll bleed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that really happened to you, mate. I, yeah. I did have I did have driving lessons many years ago, but I, I concluded in the end, especially yeah. Anyway, I concluded that that task was too hard for me. I actually in 1983, I'd actually travelled in America, on the west coast of the USA and the, wow. and Canada, and I was with a, a friend who's a physical therapist, and we we had six weeks together, and yeah, discussing. The situation of my life at that time. Um, yeah, I just decided that well, uh, driving wasn't for me. But of course, then you just decide. Well, all right, how am I going to manage my life now? So I use cabs or taxis regularly. Um, and what works well for me is having the mobile or what do you call it, cell phone or the mobile number of a taxi driver who I send a text to. I'm glad that you have that, you know, those services available to you. Like where we are, we don't have that. So it was always me like, can you give me a ride? Like I have to find a ride. It wasn't like I can call this, you know, I can call a taxi yeah. or an Uber. Um, so I'm happy that you have been, you have, you know, other options that have helped you live a successful life without getting your license. Here, yeah. not having your license was very stifling and very, I wasn't able to live the life I wanted to live because I couldn't yeah. drive. No, I just say congratulations, Carl, on that, on that accomplishment. Because, and I had, a, yeah, I had a friend who recently deceased who also had cerebral palsy and he he drove a car successfully um yeah so yeah it it happens for yeah. some i i don't think dri cp and drive driving doesn't mean happiness with cp um necessarily <laughs> i think depending on your situation it definitely plays a bigger or a smaller role in your life as what what you're able to make with it um but i don't want people who don't drive with cp to be like you know ah uh, i'm falling short of something. If you're able to work around that, then, you know, driving, just something, it's cool, but it's not something that you have to do to be successful or happy. It's, yeah, it's not exactly. it works for everybody. And I think it's important for us to realize no matter what our disability might be, I think it's important for us to realize when something isn't for us, you know? Yeah. And, sure. and you be honest about that. I mean, everybody has things that they enjoy and things that they don't. And yeah, sure, for sure. That's well, Jeff, I hate to do this to you because, you know, we weren't able to get you all the whole time, but we are going to have to wrap up here in the next couple of minutes. Uh, I did want to point out that uh, our friend Lena did love what you wrote. So keep on. Um, writing and keep on publishing because there is an appetite out there for it. And yeah, I can't wait to read your book. So you gotta let me know when you when I can like pre-order. No, no worries. And look, thanks a lot for having me on the show. I I really do appreciate it. No, yeah, we can always do a part two at some point too. So <laughs> yeah, and we we'll sort out the browser of my on my desktop <laughs> well yeah. you know no that happens. we're just happy that we were still able to talk to you for a little while and you know um this it's that's fine because it just gives us an excuse to have you on again and and talk even more so we're we're just so excited that you got to be here today you've been one of our most faithful viewers all the time and for those that you those of you that don't know it's like 6 a.m 6 a.m now, now a little bit later now, but seven oh three now, seven oh three, and it's I mean, still dark. Or it's getting lighter, but it's still darkish. Yeah, so <laughs> that that just that just speaks to your dedication, though. Like you got up before six a.m. to be ready to be on this show. No, I got up at 
I got up at about four thirty. <laughs> Thank you for one. Thank you for wanting to be on our show enough to do that because yeah. I know a lot of people wouldn't. You're more of a morning yeah. person than me. I'm up early, not four thirty. <laughs> oh, and my mom or my mom. My dad says super good guest. <laughs> oh, thanks to you, Dad. I'll be because you invite me back. <laughs> Yes, definitely. Uh, most definitely. We'll definitely have a part two where we can dive into some of this more. But again, we're just so thankful um, that you were able to be here. And yeah, we were going to whatever time it took you to get on, we were going to give you the remaining time to be on. We were like, we are not going to uh, reschedule when we could have. But we we're like, we'll take whatever time we have because we're just really yeah. looking forward to it. So we're glad that Maybe, it worked uh, so when's the next show? The next show will be good segue. Our next show is in two weeks, May 21st with Shayna Thomas. So be sure to be watching out for that. Um, thank you to hey, our viewers. One, oh, go ahead. Hey, there's one more thing I want to tell you. There's one more thing I want to tell you. I reckon we ought to go into publishing CP, the CP Chronicles and we ought, to, we ought to write a hint book, you know, how to manage some, well, whatever, difficult or any situation, you know, each other's right. hints. Right. Hey, you got some good ideas there. Yeah. We'll to... publish a book, I reckon. <laughs> yeah, CP tips and tricks. How to get yourself out of all the sticky situations I find myself in. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And we, and we could do a Spanish version. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Yeah, global then, domination. CP. We'll, just, we'll just make it. Yeah, that the bilingual thing is not a bad idea. We would make it accessible to a much larger uh, audience of uh, readers. So. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Jeff, for being here with us today. Again, we'll have you on for part two. So, if you're watching or listening on Facebook Live or uh, Disability Global yeah. Broadcast, be sure to check our page, the CP Chronicles, to know when Jeff is going to come back. And again, thank you for watching. And remember, keep on living. Keep on living. Laughing. laughing. And succeeding. Hey. Hey. Right. Awesome. All right, everybody. Have a new day. See you on the 21st. See ya. Thank you.